Okay, let's look at how to get Wireless Workbench onto your machine. Workbench is suitable for Mac devices and Windows devices as well. And the easiest way to get it onto your uh, machine of choice is to go to your search engine of choice and type in Shure Wireless Workbench, which will take you to this product page. Um, and then it's a simple case of clicking this download button. We're then going to uh, invite you to share a bit of information with us. So we need your first name, your last name, your email address, and the company that you work for. So I'm going to type these in very, very quickly. jshaw.com. <clears throat> I work for sure. There we go. Um, what is your primary application? This is not essential information. Country or region is. So we're going to go to United Kingdom. Uh, you don't have to uh, agree to share, um, you don't have to agree for us to email you if you don't want to. Submit that form and it will take you to the option to download Mac for OS or Mac for, Mac for Windows 64-bit devices. Um, I've already downloaded the installation package, so it's in my downloads folder here. I'm just going to click this to open and run it. Uh, allow the Mac to, to scan this device. There we go. And then it's a simple installation wizard. This will be very, very similar for Windows installations as well. Uh, I'm not going to share analytics with Shaw today, but we would recommend that you do so. So if there are any bugs or problems, then we get notification of that as well. I'm just going to save it onto my Mac hard drive, click install, type in my password to install the software. Uh, and then it will very, very quickly write the files. It's going to build a directory folder as well, which is where it's going to save things like shows and equipment profiles that you create and things of that nature. Uh, and then once it registers those components and gets it done, we'll be able to get running with the software. OK, we've got the installation run. The other thing that I've done is uh, put the wireless workbench icon on my uh, bottom screen here, which is a super useful thing to do. And we can go ahead and launch the software. So as I said, today we are running Wireless Workbench 7. It's worth noting that what you see here might look a little bit different to what you end up using. And that's because we are constantly updating Wireless Workbench in the background with new features and things of that nature. So the version that I've got today is the new Wireless Workbench 7. Uh, but if you're watching this at some point in the future, all of this might look slightly different. But the general premise of how this stuff works is always going to be exactly the same. And what Wireless Workbench 7 offers you when you open it is this screen. And this screen will allow you to do three things. The first thing is I can look at my network settings. Now remember, Workbench is designed to be used with any Shure device with an RJ45 port. So I can go into my network settings here and I can ask uh, wireless Workbench to look at one of my RJ45 port adapters on the machine. On Windows machines, you'll probably see a small number of adapters. If you are a Mac user like me, you're going to have a pretty long list because there's various places on a Mac that you can get a network into. The Thunderbolt ports, the Wi-Fi ports, etc. I happen to know the Ethernet port that I'm going to use is this first one, this AX88 port at the top, because it is my RJ45 adapter that I've got plugged into my Mac on the side. Um, at the moment, it has detected no IP address. And the reason for that is I haven't got anything plugged into it yet. So the laptop and the uh, hardware haven't shared any information about IP addresses or things like that, which means we currently show IP addresses disabled. Remember, Workbench is as much an offline device as it is an online device. We don't need equipment online in order to start working with the coordination. But if you are planning to plug equipment in later, as I am, I would recommend that you select the port that you are planning to use and then hit save. If you haven't got a network in there, it's going to say it was unable to restart this network. That's absolutely fine. We just click OK. If you don't do this and you need to find a network later, that's super easy to do and we'll show you how to do that um, later on in the session. The second thing that I can do is uh, create a new show, which is what we're going to do today, or I can open a previous show. Now, as we mentioned, um, Wireless Workbench creates a directory within your machine. So you will have in your documents folder somewhere a, um, a Shure directory with a tree in there for things like show files and uh, monitor profiles. Um, uh, equipment profiles, things of that nature. And that is what you are going to open when you click that open show. But since this is the first time that we're using this, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new show. Uh, we have some options at this point. Again, I can give this a show name. If I'm doing this on behalf of somebody else, I can give a customer name. I can add a 
picture or a graphic to represent the show. Uh, I've got name, address, phone and emails of contacts or venues that I can add in here and venue information as well, and then some general notes. So this is super useful. If you're using this in a rental company capacity where you're gonna send this out to somebody else, this is a really nice way of keeping track of all the information in your show. Um, for the purposes of this though, I'm not actually gonna put any information in here. I'm just gonna click finish, mainly just to show you that if you don't wanna do this, if you just wanna do some experimentation, you wanna test some stuff out, none of this is essential. So once we have um, decided what we want to do, once we clicked it, we are going to get into the software itself. So the next part of this video set is going to be navigating Wireless Workbench, going through these windows, looking at this add new device um, screen that we get and starting to get a show going.